Blog Talk Radio. Y'all tell the people there, no? Uh-huh. Welcome to God in the Midst Christian Fellowship Ministry. Our host is Apostle Barbara Kizzy. Thank you for joining us tonight. Our lines will be open, so you can call 619-639-4733 with your comments, questions, or prayer requests. Again, our number is 619-639-4733. And God bless to everyone who called in and everyone in the chat room. God, in the midst, otherwise known as G-I-T-M or Gitem, is an apostolic ministry whose charge is to help encourage, edify, and equip the people of God who are called to home churches, small churches, and parachurch ministries. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, home or house church usually have 20 people or less. Small churches are up to 100 adults, and parachurch ministries could be Bible studies, prayer groups, men or women's ministries that are not churches in and of themselves, but walk alongside the church. We are featuring one home, small, or parachurch ministry each month by interviewing them. We hope that as you hear them, tell their personal testimonies, share their history, their current activities, their future vision, and preach the word of God, the Lord will confirm what he has placed on your heart. It may encourage you to step out boldly. It may even catapult you to the next dimension in the Lord and ministry. Y'all tell the people there, no? Hallelujah. Glory to God. (laughs) Father, we just thank you. We praise you. We bless you, Lord God. We thank you for this new year. Hallelujah. 2018. Thank you, Lord God. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. And once again, you meeting us here today. According to your word, you said if two or more are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst. Hallelujah. Thank you for being in the midst in 2018. We don't know what this year will bring, but the one thing we do know, we know that we know that we know that you'll be with us all the way. So we thank you for that, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We glorify you, Lord God. And we just say, as we always say, we dedicate this broadcast to you. We dedicate it to you. We set it apart for you. This this is yours. And we say, Lord God, continue to have your way in whatever you want to do this day and every day. We are in agreement with you. 
Hallelujah. We are in total agreement with you. And we bless your holy name. Now, as you move by the spirit, by your spirit, Lord God, we thank you that this broadcast is covered. Hallelujah. From any technical issues or anything, Lord God. That we and we thank you, Father, that we are all united in you, a united one, and that you speak through even our speaker tonight through me and everyone else who comes on the line, Lord God. Speak through all of us today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, that we all receive what you have to say, those who will speak tonight and listen tonight and those who will listen even in the future. Hallelujah, that we receive from you. And we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Happy New Year to each and every one of you. So now let's go and uh, oh, to God in the word of prayer today. Dear kind and precious Heavenly Father, as we come even this evening, Lord God, we worship you and praise you in the beauty of your holiness. We thank you again, Lord God, this day for your good and goodness, for your tender mercies, for your amazing grace, for your love, your kindness, for your fidelity and your faithfulness unto me and unto each one of us, Lord God. We thank you this day for all of your manifold blessings. And as we come, we thank you above everything else for your darling son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you gave your life for us on Calvary's cross. You suffered, you bled, and you died that we might be brought in the right standing with yourself. And for this, we will be forever grateful that you're our Savior, our Lord, our God. You're our constant companion. You are the one who is our friend. You're our very best friend. Hallelujah. You're the confidant that we can come to with whatever goes on in our lives. And we worship you today. We give you praise. We give you honor, Lord Jesus Christ, and we give you glory. We're just thankful to you even this day. And then again, Lord Jesus, you told us, you said that you didn't want to leave us comfortless without a helper without someone where you could be with us at all times. And you said it's expedient for us that you go away. For you said if you go not away, then the precious Holy Spirit would not come unto us. But if you go go away, you said you would send him unto us. And when he has come, he would lead and guide us into all truth. He would be the one who would tell us about you to really let us know who you are and the truth of who you are. He would lead and guide us into all truth. Give us the power that we need to witness, to serve, and to love. You've given us a paracletos, one who can come alongside of us and now inside of us to empower us to lead a victorious and overcoming life in you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we love you today. We thank you, precious thank Holy you, Spirit. Lord. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for who you are in our lives. And I'm eternally grateful. I'm looking to you. My eyes are upon you this evening. The Lord God, uh-huh. that you would speak through me this evening with clarity, with accuracy, with simplicity, and with a good understanding. That you would speak to me through me. Lord God, that you would confirm your word tonight with signs and wonders following, Father God. And then I just pray, Father God, in the name, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, that you would let us hear your word tonight with clarity, accuracy, with simplicity, and with a good understanding. Father God, before we go into the word and we get right into the word tonight, I pray for every man, woman, boy, and girl who's listening to this broadcast now and those who will listen later on at a later date. I pray, kind Heavenly Father, that you would meet each one at the point of their need, whatever their need might be, spiritually, physically, financially, socially, emotionally, in every single area of their lives. I pray, Lord God, for that one who's experiencing pain in their back, Lord God. Lord, I speak to that pain. You said to speak to the mountain, say, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. And if we didn't doubt in our hearts, but believe that those things that we say will come to pass, we'll have whatsoever we say. So I speak in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to that back pain. That that person who's listening now or later on who may be listening years from now, I speak to that back pain. I command it to bow its knee to the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and to the word of God, and to leave you now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Also speak to all trouble in the respiratory system. I bind and break the power of all 
symptoms and all distress to the respiratory system. I also speak in the name of the Lord Jesus to all pains in the wrist and other parts of the body. In the name of the Lord Jesus, right now while you're we're at this part before we go into the word, lay your hands on your chest, lay your hands on your body, lay your hands if you don't do it, but on your stomach. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, right now I speak to all weakness, sickness, disease, infirmity, pain, to all sinus trouble, all pains behind the eye, all pains even on the yes. pelvic area, on the bones to the bones. I bind and break Thank the power Lord. of all weakness, sickness, and disease oh, and infirmity, oh, God, pain and discomfort to your body right now. If you're listening right now. I speak to that thing. I command it to leave you now. I call for Thank healing, you. wholeness, wellness. I summon it. I make a withdrawal from that which Jesus has already put on deposit for us. I make a withdrawal of healing, wholeness, wellness, and soundness to every cell and organ and system of your body from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Be healed, be whole, be well, and be found in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then, Father, I ask, Lord oh, God, Lord that you would not only meet each one at their physical need, Lord God, but meet each person tonight spiritually, financially, socially, emotionally, in every area, Lord God, that you would meet each one of us. Each one of us, Lord God, at the point of our need, whatever that need might be. And I thank you, kind Heavenly Father, even in advance, because that's what you do best. You're gracious. You're disposed to show us favors. That's the, you're a good God. You're a good God. You care for your children, Lord God. And I thank you and praise you for meeting each one of us this night at the point of our need in the mighty and in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes, Amen. That, one that, that behind the eye, that just as I ended up in the prayer, that person that's experiencing pain behind that eye, he conquered it a whole shot. I command that pain to leave from you. I command your body to be healed. I command your body to be whole. I command your body to be well around those ankles. He conquered a whole that I see him on your side in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be healed. Be whole. Be well. God cares for you. Be healed. Be whole. Be well. Yeah. Be sound in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we give you praise in advance. And we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As I go into this, hallelujah. As I go into this word for 2018, I want to give an introduction as to how this word came into being, and then I'll announce what that word is. A few days ago, uh, I was sitting outside of Kroger's waiting on my daughter, Amber, and I opened my Bible and began to read in Genesis 24 and verse 35. It just seemed to stand out to me, that particular verse. And it said, and the Lord had blessed my master greatly, and he has become great, and he has given him flocks mm. and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. I went back and read it again. And the Lord has blessed my master greatly, and the Lord has blessed my master greatly, and he has become great. And that, that's talking about the Lord. And the Lord. He has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. So I went back to the beginning of that chapter while I was sitting there in the car. I went back to the beginning of Genesis uh, 24. And as I began to go back to Genesis 24, that uh, one, I begin to read in verses 1 through 7. Verse 1 says, and Abraham was now a very old man. And the Lord had blessed him in every way. That's in the, in the New Living Translation says, the Lord blessed him in every way. In the King James it says, and Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. He blessed him in every way, and he blessed him in all things. Now this, when you begin, I would really uh, challenge you or or encourage you to go back and read in Genesis 24. It's such a marvelous chapter. My girls really like that because uh, we they saw how God allowed for uh, Abraham's son Isaac to get his wife, and that really was just a, such a blessing to them uh, in reading in Genesis 24. It says in verse 2, it says of Genesis 24, And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, the rule over all that he had, Put I pray thee thy hand under my thigh. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, 
among whom I dwell. He said, go and say it to my homeland, to my relatives, and find a wife there for my son Isaac. The servants asked, but, but the servant asked, but what if I can't find a young woman who's willing to travel so far from home? Should I then take, a, take Isaac there to live among your relatives in the land you came from? I'm going to read that little part again. He said, should I then take Isaac there to live among your relatives in the land you came from? Abraham said in verse 6, no. Abraham responded, be careful never to take my son there. For the Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and my native land solemnly promised to give this land to my descendants, he will send his angel ahead of you. He will send his angel ahead of you, and he will see to it that you find a wife there for my son. Then after I had read that, then the Lord took me back again to Genesis 24, 34, and 35. Go on, drop it down because this chapter is very long. It's about 60-some verses. And he said in verse 34, he said, I am Abraham's servant. He said, I'm Abraham's servant. And the Lord has blessed my master greatly, and he has become great. Before it said that the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things and in every way. Then here in verse 35 again it says, and the Lord had blessed my master greatly, and he has become great. And he has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. So when he read that, and when I read that, after I read that, and when I, I said, hmm, it began to, God began to just deal with me in the car. I went back and I remember Genesis 13, 1 and 2, where Abraham had, uh, uh, when I read about Abraham, and it says before he became Abraham, he was Abram. And in Genesis 13, verse 1 and 2, it says, And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Okay? We see, we know who made him rich. The Lord did. Then the Lord led me to Psalms 1, 2. This is while I'm sitting in the car. The Lord led me to Psalms 112, verse 2, and it, uh, 1 through 3. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3 says, and this really stood out to me, wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. By this time, when I got through reading that one, then Amber came out. And I went on about my daily business and went on to do what I was going to do. Well, that night around 3 o'clock, about 3, I looked at the clock, it was 325. I woke up and couldn't go back to sleep. And the Lord began to minister to my heart that he was giving me a word for 2018 to give to his people. And the word that he says is that he wants his people to be blessed and rich in all things and in every way. He said, just like I wanted Abraham to be, to be blessed, I bless Abraham in every way and in all things. I want my people even today to be blessed and rich in all things and in every way. This particular message has three particular parts. This message for 2018 of that God wants us blessed. He said, number one, there is an encouragement and exhortation to us that we must remember in 2018 that God has not and will not change. He did it for Abraham. God said, I'll do it for you. God said, I want to talk to you today by my spirit to tell you I want you blessed in every single way, every way. And then he has a warning. It's a woe for us as believers in Christ during this year of 2018. And the woe and the warning is this. Don't let anyone or anyone talk you out of God's blessing. Don't let anyone lock you out of the blessings that God has for you. And the third part of this message is that there is a charge and a command that the Lord wants us to remember. Those who are really blessed by the Lord, those who are going, who are going to be blessed, those who the riches and blessings of God are going to be manifested in abundance, God said there's a charge and a command I'm giving to each one of you tonight. Because, see, there is a, when the, the Scripture talks about God will teach us how to abase, how to go without a lot and, and, uh, and a little, 
but he'll also teach you how to abound. You have to be taught how to walk in wealth. You have to be taught how to walk in the blessings of the Lord. So those are the three parts that we're going to go to. So first of all, what I'm going to talk about very quickly is, is that we must remember in 2018 that God has not changed and will not change. Malachi 3 and verse 6 says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. God said, I don't change. If I did it for Abraham, listen to me, beloved. Listen to me, precious woman, a man of God. God said, if I did it for Abraham and I blessed him and I made him very rich in every way, in all things and in every way, I want to do the same thing for you. If you'll let me, God says, because this message is designed to build your faith in the Bible fact that God wants to bless his people. Then in James 1.17, it says, every good and perfect gift is from above. Every good and perfect gift is from above. There are things that people have done for you, but that gift came from God. God will touch people on your behalf. There was something that I needed done today. We had a flood in our home from the pipes bursting from our next-door neighbor. We live in a townhouse. And when the pipes bursted because of the cold and the water flooded into our living room, and they, the, the men came out to come, <laughs> they came out to come and suck the water up out the living room. But when they came, they said, oh, no, you got to move this furniture. And we're not allowed to touch your things because we will be liable if we touch this. So now we're in a household with, with my husband who can't do a lot of lifting right now. I, in my, we're, we're, they say senior, can't do a lot of lifting. My girls tried to go and do what they could do, and they ended up with back hurts and back trying to lift all this stuff. So we have to trust God to be able to work and to move on our behalf. We've got to know that God loves us. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. And God gave me a plan this morning. He gave me a plan as I laid in the bed, and he told me what to do. I talked it over with Joe. I went in the living room, began to just take the pillows off the couch, just take the, the, you know, the sofa cushions off the couch, and begin to take stuff and take it off. And as I turned to look out my front window, there were two men headed my way toward my door. And as they got to the door, they told us that, that, that uh, Ms. Williams, the, the one who's uh, the manager of the complex where we live in, she said, go over there and see about Ms. Price then. I want you to go in there. Before you go see about anybody else, go over there. And when they came in, they said, we'll move the furniture out for you. So they came in tonight. They sucked up all the water. They removed the pads and, and, and from under there. And, and we're on our way to getting things ratified, as they say, and to get it worked out. But God cares enough for you. He cares enough for me, but he said, I'll work. I'll bring the right people at the right time. He's saying that to somebody today. He said, don't be flustered. Don't be flustered. God does does not want us anxious about anything. He said, I want you blessed in all things and in every way. He said, I got some good news for you today. And the good news is that I do want you to be blessed. I do want you to be rich in all things and in every way. And if I did it for Moses, I mean, did it for Abraham, be assured, I'll do it for you. In James 1.17, it said, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, with whom there is no change or shifting shadow. God says, there's no change in him. He said, I'm not, I'm not, there's no change or shifting shadow. And then in Psalms 145 and verse 8 and 9, the word of God says, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He's slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all. We got to know the character and nature of God. And his tender mercies are over all his work. When Oral Roberts began to preach uh, in his ministry before he passed, he would say, God is a good God. And people got mad about that. They were so angry that he was preaching that God is a good God. I got news for you today. The Bible fact is that God is a good God. Why does he heal? Why does he deliver? Why does he protect? He said, the Lord is gracious. He's disposed to show you favor. God will give you favor with people. He'll lay you up on their hearts and minds as you begin to trust him and look to him and say, Lord, my eyes are upon you. The, the psalmist said, I'll look unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. God said, I'm your help today. Whatever you're facing, whether it be spiritually, physically, financially, socially, emotionally, in your marriage, on your job, in your home, in your own mind, will, and emotion, whatever you're going through, God said, I'm a very present help in time of trouble. I'm here to help you today. I'm here to help you. You got the right message that you're listening to today. God said, I'm coming with some good news. I'm a help for you. So he said he's gracious. He's full of compassion. Have you, do you know, there's not too many people you can know like this. I, that's why I said I have one of the, the most precious mothers in all the planet. 
I have a precious mom. I have precious sisters. Lord, have mercy. I got some sisters that are, are that some of the best sisters, and I'm really meaning that on this planet. The Lord has blessed us with a great family. And and when you find it, when you see some people that are full of compassion, gracious, disposed to show you mercy. I'm telling you they have the character and nature of God, but there's nobody like Jesus who can do us like God can. He's the one that's gracious. He said to you, beloved, I'm gracious. Come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I'm here to help you. I'm a very present help in time of trouble, the Lord said. And he's of great mercy. He's of great mercy. He'll see the God, loving kindness, fidelity, and faithfulness. And he's good to all, not just some. He's good to all and his tender mercy over all his works. The word of God says in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, if I did it yesterday for one, I'll do it for you. He said, I'll do it just for you. Then in John 10, 10, Jesus said, the thief cometh not before to steal and kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, listen, beloved, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. That's the God that we serve. He wants us, as he blessed Abraham in all things and in every way, and he made him great. He blessed him with silver. He blessed him with gold. He blessed him with cattle. He blessed him with health. He blessed him with wealth. He blessed him in all ways. God said, I want to do that same thing for you. You just take it and grab hold to it and say, Lord, I believe it. I receive your blessing in my life, but you want to bless it. You're blessing me. You're blessing me in every way. I love where, where John Osteen and, and uh, Joel Osteen would say, uh, they said they have this saying, and others have said it too, that they said, this is my Bible. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do, and I can have what God says I can have. And then they have a little part that goes on with it. And so I have to make that, and you must make that your declaration. I am what God says I am. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made by God, and I know that right well. My confidence, my validation has to come from God and his word. I am his daughter. I'm his child. You're his son. You're his daughter. God wants to encourage your heart tonight and let you know that you are who he says you are. You can have what he says you can have, and you can do what he says that you can do. And then he went on. I, I love that the Get Em Radio, they're covering for this year. Apostle Kizzy's uh, the Get Em Radio cover. They have Psalm 65 and in verse 11, which says, Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy paths drop fatness. Oh, that's an abundance. God crowns our year. May he crown your year, beloved. May he crown your year, beloved, with his goodness. May you, and you, you just receive it. So, Lord, I thank you. I receive Psalm 65, 11, that you crown my year with your goodness. And, your, and in the past, and my past will drop forth abundance. Because ultimately what he wants to give you, those blessings, is that you might be blessed to be a blessing unto others. And then remember in, in Luke uh, 4, verse 18 and 19, when Jesus began to sit in the synagogue and read Isaiah 61, he said, and in Luke 4, 18 and 19, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance unto the captives, recover them sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. God says, you see what it says when Jesus, he said, the spirit of the Lord was upon him because he has anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor, good news to the poor. And my pastor, Pastor G.W. Robinson, he would always say, he said, now what do you think that, that, that Jesus would preach to the poor? He would tell the poor, you don't have to be poor anymore. And that's good news. He came to sit. He sent him to heal the brokenhearted. That's why I know that when my heart has been hurt and when I've been broken or blindsided by some things or there's hurt, there. I'm telling you, there's some things that will blindside you. There'll be people that are going through with somebody else and take it out on you. And you're going, whoa, 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 what happened? What did I do? What did I say? That was let me know. He said, don't get involved in their, their thing. I came to heal the brokenhearted. Come on now. God will, God will, God will heal your broken heart. Some of you know what I'm talking about. As my sister said, we've experienced this year so many ones who've gone to be with the Lord. And every time I begin to think about my nephew, Joshua, and my sister, Martha, and my cousin, Lanny, when I begin to think about all the ones who've gone on, my cousin, Troy, I think about all the ones who've gone through Dwayne, who I used to babysit when I was a, a young girl. When I think about all the ones who've gone on to be with the Lord last year, the only one who could keep my heart 
even when I was home and went for my mama's birthday, and I, I wanted to break out crying, but I said, no, I can't break out crying. I know my sister is with the Lord, but I said, now, Lord God, there's not seven of us anymore. There's six of us, but God said she's with me. So he knows how to heal the brokenhearted. When I've had six children that went to be with the Lord, and I thought I couldn't bear it, I thought I couldn't go through anymore to have had six children to go to be with the Lord. When my son, Joshua Lewis Price, passed, I, I felt like I was going to lose my mind, but God said, no, you won't. He's with me. He came to heal the brokenhearted. He specializes in that. There's nobody like him. I love in Second uh, Corinthians, the first chapter, 1 through 6, how he comforts us, comforts us with his comfort so that we can go forth and comfort others with the same comfort that God gives. Nobody can comfort our hearts like God. Nobody can. So he said he came and was sent to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and when you're bound by something. God said, I came to tell you, you can be unbound. You can be unbound. I'm telling you, when I was a stone-out alcoholic, got up in the morning drinking, going to bed at night drinking, going in and taking pills in between. The God I served delivered me. Hallelujah. He conjured a whole drive by Sia. Hallelujah. Nobody like God. And he said he came to give recovery of sight to the blind. I mean, if you've got an ailment, I mean, whatever it is, God said, I give recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Have you been bruised, beloved? Have you been broken? Have you gone through some things where you feel like your hope is almost gone? Let me tell you something. I love the scripture where he said, a bruised reed will I not break, nor a smoking flax will I not put out. When you are bruised, God said, I'm not going to break you when you're bruised. He said, I'll come and comfort you. I'll give you the balm of Gilead. I'll help you when nobody else can help you. God said, I will not break you. When he, that's why he said, run to me. There are so many songs I love when Smokey uh, Norville took that uh, Whitney Houston song, Run, I Want to Run to You. She was singing that song. Smokey Norville made it into a song for Christians, and I love that song. I want to run to you, Lord God. And that's the one I can run to. Well, I'm telling you, when you run to him, he's the one that can help you when nobody else can help you. And I, that's who I'm there. That's why sometimes it may seem like it's a hard thing when there are people that may not want to talk to you every day. Or they may not want to, when you're hurting me, you know, you say, I'm hurting, I'm hurting, I need somebody. Jesus said, talk to me. Come to me. Lean on me. I tell people I wear shoulder pads in my clothes. Oh, my sweaters, my jackets, I have shoulder pads. But my shoulders are not big enough to carry your problems. My shoulders are not big enough. I can pray for you. I can encourage you. But there's nobody that can do you like Jesus. There's nobody who can comfort you in the night season, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, nanosecond by nanosecond. God will comfort your heart so you can make it through. I, I want to encourage your heart tonight, beloved. And then he said to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now is the time for salvation. You can come now. All the barriers have been removed, and you can receive Jesus now into your heart, into your life in Jesus' name. And so we see that he was encouraging us. He found the same yesterday and forever. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish or pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. This first part of this message is and has been that God is encouraging us that we must remember in 2018 that God has not and will not change. He said in that third John 2, it said, even as thy soul prosper. If you flip that around, it says, even as thy soul prosper. He wants us to what? Prosper and be in health. He said, as you get closer to me, he said, what has he said? God said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God said, come unto me, all you that labor. He said, I want you to prosper. I want you to be in health. God wants his people to be blessed and rich in all things and in every way. Now let's go to the second part. There is a warning, a woe for us as believers in Christ during this year of 2018. And that warning is this. Let me warn you now. There's a woe. Whoa, woe unto you. I'll read that scripture in a minute. He says, and the warning is, you must not let anyone lock you out of what God has provided for you through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, through the precious 
through his body that was broken and through his blood that was shed. Don't let anybody lock you out. People will drop their words, their own perspective, their own thoughts. They will try to lock you out of God's best for you in every area. Remember, we have a better covenant that is based upon better promises, that is ratified in the precious mighty blood of Jesus Christ and in his body that was broken for us in Hebrews 8 and verse 6. We got a better covenant. We know the Old and New Testament is a testament. It's like a will where the testator had to die in order for that will to come into effect. So we know that we've got an inheritance that has been given to us. He goes a little further. Not only is this a testament, but the word of God is a covenant to us. We have an old covenant and a new covenant. But he calls this new covenant that we have a better covenant. It's better. It's better even than what Abraham had. It's better. He was good to Abraham. He blessed him in all things. He made his name great. And he said that old covenant is not even as good as the new covenant. We have a better covenant that is based on better promises. Don't let nobody steal from you what God has given to you. Mark 7 and verse 13 says, there are ones who make the word of God of none effect through their tradition, which they have delivered. And they do many such things like that. The one of the translation says this, so you cancel the word of God in order to hand down your own tradition. You cancel the word of God to hand down your own tradition, your own perspective, your own thought. He said, by your, one of the translation says, by your own rule. What you teach people, you're rejecting what God said. And you do many things like that. God said that, that people will come in and lock you out with one word. All they got to do is say one word. So you can't go to listen to anybody that will say anything else because they lock you up. God wants you blessed in everything and all things and in every way, just like he did. He don't change. He said, I don't change now. You've got to remember that. Look with me in Romans 10, verse 1 through 3. It says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. He said, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of God. I want you to know there are people who will have a zeal and enthusiasm. One translation says, I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is misdirected zeal. For they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself, refusing to accept God's way. They cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. One translation says, and, and I, it says, I know they love God. I know they love God, but they don't understand what makes people acceptable to him. So they refuse to trust God, and they try to be accepted, acceptable by obeying the law. There are people that will lock you out. I can remember a time when I was younger when they told me I wanted to be saved. I wanted to be saved when I was younger. But they said, you got to give up that. You can't wear no pants. You can't wear nothing without any sleeves on it. I used to love to go swimming. And they said, you can't wear anything without sleeves on it. Even they talked about the, 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 the sandals I had on where I put my feet in the sandals, you know, where you're between your toes. And they said, ooh, you got on bikini sandals. And, and, and they would lock us out of, of even walking in the things of God because they said, you're not saved if you wear a lipstick, if you wear a nail polish. Now, you know what? Now I'm here at a certain age, and I'm looking at some of the same people that preach that are wearing pants right now. Some of the same people. I saw somebody wearing pants. I went, they got on. Now I'm not down on them wearing pants, thank God, because that has nothing to do with our salvation. It's only through Jesus' body that was broken and his blood that was shed that we brought, were brought into right standing with the Father. And the Holy Spirit will teach us how to dress, but the pants don't save us. Neither does nail polish or getting rid of nail polish or lipstick. But people will lock you out of the things of God through their traditions, through their own perspective, and not the word of God. That's why I said when we talk about woe, in Luke 11 and verse 52, it says, Woe unto you lawyers, for you've taken away the key of knowledge. You enter not in yourselves, and them that were entering in, you hindered them. You hindered the ones that want to go in. You take away the key of knowledge. Another one said in, in Matthew 23, one, he said, woe to you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. 
And then in, then in uh, Colossians 2 and verse 8 says, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and elemental spiritual forces of this world, world rather than on Christ. And it said over in, 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 in that scripture, Romans 10, 1 through 3, he said, I know they love God. There are people that really love God, but they're ignorant. People, people said, we used to talk about ignorance gone to seed, S-E-E-D. Ignorance gone to seed. People will take their ignorance, their ignorant perspective, plant that ignorant perspective in you, and it will grow up in you, and you will be ignorant like them. Come on now. Don't let nobody lock you up during this 2018 from what all God has for you. God said, I want you to be blessed. I want you to be rich in all things and in every way. And you can try to say, oh, this is a prosperity message, whatever you want to call it. But God wants his people to prosper and be in health even as their soul prospers in every area, spiritually, physically, financially, soulishly, emotionally. God wants his people blessed. And, beloved, God wants you blessed. God, well, I know I'm preaching to the choir right now, but God wants you blessed. Now, the last thing is that there's a charge and command that the Lord wants us to remember in 2018. This is a charge to those who are blessed by God. This is a charge to God, to those that God is about to teach you how to abound in the blessings of God. There are ones who are becoming CEOs of companies. There are ones that God is multiplying and blessing you, exceeding abundant over and above whatever you could expect, ask, or even think, and you've got to know how to walk in that way. This is our last scripture for tonight. Let's go to 1 Timothy 6. 1 Timothy, the sixth chapter. Now, remember, it didn't say Helen Price 6, verse 17 through 19. It said 1 Timothy 6, 17 through 19. 1 Timothy 6, 17 through 19. And this is a charge and a command to those who are rich. God will tell you how to walk in this thing. In 1 Timothy 6, it says, verse 17, it says, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. That's just part of that verse. I'm going to come back to the other part. In another translation, it says, tell those who are rich not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which will soon be gone. But their pride and trust should be in the living God. It says, command those. It says, command. Not only charge, but he commands those. In the NIV Bible, it says, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant. See, because when people get money, and they know they got the money, and they ain't got to. They don't have to depend. They ain't got to. I'm sorry, Bonnie. They ain't got to depend on nobody but nothing because God has so blessed them. He said, "I give you a charge." God said, "I give you a charge. Don't be high-minded. Don't be proud. Don't be arrogant. Not to put their hope in wealth." In, 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 the, in, in the New King James Bible, it says, "And command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty." Not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. God wants us to know in, in, in walking in him, as you begin and you walk in this time in 2018, listen to me, beloved. And there's some of you, I see faces coming before me of ones. Oh, I see you. I see you as a precious woman of God, man of God. I see you. God's about to do some big and marvelous and mighty and matchless things. I mean, poverty, lack, and want and insufficiency will be a thing of the past. You're going to have to keep some memorials to remember what it was like to not have enough. Because God is about to do something. You've been prepared for such a time as this. God has gotten you ready. God has getting you ready. He's thrusting you out. And when the shift comes, already some of you have already begun to experience it in 2017. When the shift comes, it will be so much like night and day and, and light and darkness. Because God is about to do some exceeding abundance over and above things in your life to bless you to be a blessing unto others. But he said, now listen, as you're blessed, he said, don't you be high-minded. Don't you be proud. Don't you be arrogant. Don't you be haughty. He said, but trust in God, in the living God. And this is what he said, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That's the last part of that 17th verse of 1 Timothy 6 and verse 17. He said, he giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Here we come again. God said he gives it to us richly, all things to enjoy. In the Living Bible, it says the living God who always richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. 
it says in, in, in the NIV, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. It says in the New King's James, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. God wants to give it to us, but he says, when I do, he said, look now, honey, look now, sir, do not be high-minded. Don't be proud. Don't be arrogant. Don't be haughty. He said, because, and one of the things he said was uncertain riches. See, he, we know that our riches are built in Christ and in him and his provision. The world uh, 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 has an uncertainty, but we know that in God, we've got to put our trust in him and not be high-minded. Look at verse 18 and 19. In verse 18, I'm going to stop at that one. I'm not stop at that. I'm talking about for just a moment. Hang on to that one. But they do good. Now, he tells the rich, those who are very blessed by God, that they do good, that they be rich in good works ready to distribute, dis- distribute, willing to communicate, willing to talk to people. You know, I know of God, we have to be led by the Spirit, willing to communicate. It says in, in the Living Bible, tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and should give happily to those in need, always being ready to share with others whatever God has given them. It says in, in verse 18, command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. It says in verse 18, let them do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share. Many times as we've gone through low times, it ought to teach us and train us that when we get to a certain place, as we've gone through, to be able to do as others have done unto us. Many times there are ones who have not gone through some rough times, and sometimes they'll tell you, I've heard people say, I've got mine, now you get yours. I work for what I got, they said, and I'll get, I, and then some would say like they did in, in the church of Laodicea, they said, I'm rich and I have need of nothing. And they'll be arrogant and high-minded. Oh, come on now. That's what I charge you during this time. I charge you in this world, don't be high-minded, but do good. Do good. Use what I give you to do good. And then it says in verse 19, laying up in store for your, themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. He said, by doing this, they will be storing up real treasure for themselves in heaven. It is the only safe investment for eternity, and they will be living a fruitful Christian life down here as well. The NIV says in verse 19, in this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. And then verse 19 in the NIV, in New King James, storing up for yourselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. God wants his people to be blessed, but he gives us a charge. He gives us a command to know what to do as he blesses us. Don't be high-minded. Don't be proud. Don't be arrogant. Don't be haughty. But, but, be, but and he said, and know this. He said, I give you all things to richly enjoy. I give that to you, but do good. Do good. Do good works. Be, be ready to distribute, willing to communicate. So as we close today, I thank God for this word that he's given unto us in 2018, that God wants us blessed and rich in all things and in every way. And he wants us to remember in 2018 that God is the same God that blessed Abraham. He said, I've I'm, I'm not changed. I'm the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And if I blessed faithful Abraham then, and now you have a better covenant based on better promises, I'll bless you. Hold on to that, beloved. Because the second part of this message says that there's a warning and a wolf for us as believers in Christ Jesus. Let no man lock you up with their doctrine and their perspective. I don't care how much they seem to love God. They may truly love God with all their heart, their mind, their soul, their strength, but be ignorant of God's covenant that he's made, that has been ratified, a better covenant based on better promises. And all the promises are yes and amen to us as believers. And then thirdly, the last one was that there's a charge and a command that the Lord wants us to remember in 2018. He wants us to remember, don't be high-minded now. Don't you be haughty. Don't be arrogant. And, and he says in the word of God to not be proud. But remember that it is God that has given us these blessings, so we must be willing to do good. We must be willing to be rich in good works ready to distribute, and willing to communicate. Because he gives us that, that wealth that his covenant may be confirmed and established. He gives us that, that wealth that we may be blessed to be a blessing unto others. 
I challenge you and, and call this year that as God begins to pour out your, the blessings upon you, that you let God use you to be blessed, to be a blessing unto others. Father God, as we come this night and we thank you for your word, which has truly been a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway, your word that we hidden and hidden in our hearts that we might not sin against thee, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you've opened the eyes of our understanding that we may behold wondrous things out of your word. Bless every man, boy, and girl out there, will, man, woman, boy, and girl that will listen unto this message, Father God. Bless them in the way that they need it the most. And, Lord, let them be encouraged today to know that you want them blessed in, in all things and in every way, Lord God. You want them to be blessed and rich in all things and in, in every way. Bless the people of God. Bless your people, Lord God. And I give you praise. I give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.